Hello folks, in today's video I want to talk about two core elements in the PD language that are bangs and numerical values. So a bang is a special type of message that can be used to trigger an action or an operation, an envelope, it can be used in many different scenarios. We can find bangs in four different forms, the word bang inside a message box, we can find the object bank, also found in its short version B. And last but not least, we can find the graphical elements for a bank, the clickable bank object. You can create this same element with the word B and G inside an empty object box, or you can use the shortcut Ctrl Shift B. I personally use the shortcut, but if you don't like it or you want to change it, you can enter the main menu, settings, shortcuts, and here you can add or change shortcuts according to uh, your needs. Now let's try to use this bank to trigger a simple arithmetical operation. I want to multiply by 10 the following number. And then I want to print the result. In the previous video, what we did was we triggered the actual message box. Now we can take the output pin of bang, send it to the message, and we can trigger the bang to trigger the operation, the arithmetical operation. And as we can see, we have the result printed in the console. Of course, this example is very stupid. There's no need in this specific situation to use a bang. But there are some objects that can receive a bang on their first input to um, output a value. For instance, we could use the float object. And if we move the mouse on its first input, we can see that a bang can be used to output the stored value. If no value is provided to float and we trigger it, it will print zero by default. So what we can do is we can write a number, send it to its first inlet. We can now clear the console and if we trigger the float object with our bang, it will output the stored value. PD offers multiple methods for entering numbers. The one we've seen so far is not that handy, so we have to generate, create the empty message box, and then type the number. What we can use instead is a float object, also called float box. When we are in run mode, if we move the mouse over the object, as you can see, decimal positions will highlight. In this way, we can fine tune the value. If your side panel is open and you click on this object, the inspector will show the object properties. We have the position, the uh, width, by default is set to 5, we can make it bigger, and we can change font height, but more important, we can change its range. So the default is no range. Let's say that I want to clamp the values in the range 0 to 1, so I want to normalize values in this range. Now, if I interact with the object, as you can see, I can reach the minimum limit that is zero, and I cannot go uh, beyond as well for the maximum limit. This is very useful, especially when you are tweaking and setting parameters and you don't want them to exceed a certain threshold. Now, let's use this float box inside a simple arithmetical operation. So I want to multiply the incoming value by 10 and print the result. What we can notice is that every time, oops, every time we change the number, it will trigger an output. So keep it in mind, it will update as you change the input number. Numbers are always of type float, which means that PD doesn't have a true integer type. In case you want to round a number to its nearest integer, you can use the integer object, which will output a fake integer. As I reach the first integer value, 
the integer object will output the result. If you want to change the rounding method, you can insert a plus 0 0.5. So as the first decimal position is 5, the patch will output the next integer. If you found this video useful, please consider joining my Patreon page. That is the easiest way you can support my work. That said, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. Ciao, ciao.